prophets throughout history have made mistakes. There is no such thing as a perfect prophet and there is no such thing as a prophet being higher than God. At one point in time, Moses, the prophet, disobeyed God, but yet that didn't take him away from his calling, neither was he considered a false prophet. And there are those who believe that the prophet Elijah came to a point where he was suicidal. That wasn't the case about Elijah being suicidal. Elijah rather be with God in the present because he knew that that was his only way of receiving rest. The word suicide comes from a, um, a modern Latin, which is a suicidium. And the word sui means one. And side or sidium, that actually means killing. So basically suicide is, means like killing or harming oneself. The case of Elijah, he wasn't suicidal. He just, he just rather be in the presence of God. That's why he in the text, you have to read the text as if you are actually in his shoes, actually walking in his lifeline to, to really know what's, what's going on. But uh, he, he would rather be in the presence of God than actually take his own life because he know that if he do that, he will be in the wrong. For over 2,000 years in church history, the community has known Doubting Thomas as his authentic name. In actuality, it's not really his name. It was just a moment of weakness. The Apostle Thomas had a weak moment. And yet we use that shame and add it on to his name. In fact, about Thomas, Thomas didn't doubt Jesus. He just doubted the resurrection, even though Jesus mentioned it before. Um, actually, a couple of years, well, I can maybe, I don't know exactly how many years, but uh, sometime before Jesus' crucifixion, the Apostle Thomas actually said to, to, to his, the rest of his disciples, this is around the time that um, this was around the time that Jesus was actually going to uh, wake up Lazarus before he went on his way with the apostles behind him or all together. Thomas said that, you know, let us go with him as far as with Jesus and let us die with him. You know, we look at Thomas, oh, he's just a doubting Thomas, you know, and Elijah, oh, it's a suicidal. It's like, you know, these people are, you know what I'm saying? I won't say celebrities, but these people are honored throughout civilization, throughout history. And we have to be careful how we name these individuals because they are considered like the first fruits. And much of their lives is what we are learning now through the text. Doubting Thomas, I wouldn't even say he's a... Uh, Doubting Thomas. Yeah, he slipped up. You know, maybe he, of course, like any prophet, any apostle, any evangelist, any preacher, any missionary, any evangelist, anybody, we have slipped up. But it's it's kind of it's kind of good not to call them by what they've done, but look at them for who they are. And that's what this case of me doing this video in the matter of not really um, just telling you guys, teaching you guys not to really criticize anybody because when you criticize someone you are also given power to condemn them and it should not be when you condemn somebody you're simply destroying them but when you're building them up building them up it shows that you love them so with this case with thomas he was actually willing to die with jesus not that many people talk about this because they look at his faults they look at his failures, but you got to look at his achievements too, because did nobody say anything. Jesus didn't even say anything, but Thomas was at a point where he was actually going to die with Jesus because he knew that if he died with him, he's going to be raised up with him too. In John chapter three, verse 17, um, Jesus said that I did not come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. How many of you 
or how many people you know who are fellow believers who are in the body of Christ are doing the complete opposite where Jesus even said himself that he did not come to condemn the world but to save it but how many people you know that is actually condemning one another and not saving it no it's kind of backwards if you were from Brazil you will be speaking the Brazilian language which is Portuguese you will also have the Brazilian culture within you. If you're from Christ, you will be speaking as Christ. You will be acting like Christ. And you will have a heavenly culture. Could you imagine a divine moment in the presence of Christ that he stands in front of you and with the wave of a hand, it's like a screen that would show. And it's like, it's like you're actually watching a movie of your life and he's right there with you, side by side with you, watching what you're watching. And he reveals everything about yourself, how you treat people, how you look at people a certain way, how you degrade them, how you criticize them, how you condemn them, the good and the bad. You wouldn't want that to be shown on YouTube. You will not want people to see the movie of your life from beginning until end because there is some things that you would definitely hide from. Who gave us the power to expose people and their flaws, their weaknesses, or even their wickedness? You know, we're supposed to expose sin, you know what I'm saying, not people, in the way that we have to have some sort of authority from God to do it in love and with love. Truth, love, and correction is beautiful when you release it. But if you're the kind of person that wants to just show out injustice, uh, uh, um, uh, rudeness, and criticism, that can tear a person's spirit down. And we are created to build one another up in love, not criticize. So far with the mainstream media, I'm still on topic here. I'm not off topic, but Kanye West is like, I mean, a lot of people, even believers are talking about him. And I don't really engage myself into that, even though I had to write someone, you know, for not just them, but for everybody to see it in just the same message that I'm telling you guys about this. You know, to be honest with you, what a lot of people look at is that it's not a problem if a celebrity worships Satan. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it, okay, fine. But when one actually turns to Christ, it's a big problem. Why is it a big problem? You know, you're praying for souls to be saved and when they get saved, now you want to criticize. I'm not saying that goes for you, but it's just some people that's watching this know that I'm talking directly to them. And that's what this message is for. I don't know if you were raised up in a, in a home where you were always condemned for something, something you didn't do, or you're always criticized about things. And you grew up with that same stronghold and, you, and that's in your mentality, that's your mentality to, to, to destroy other people and yet call yourself a religious or a Christian person. Being a Christian means you're of Christ. You're a new creation. It means a new way of thinking, a new way of living, a new way of, of being, not carrying the old into the new. Very common that why some people will separate themselves from church is because of hypocrisy and because of the things that I even spoke about on here. So they will leave church. And when a person leaves church, they are nearly maybe on the verge, not saying all, but some are on the verge of actually leaving Christ. And that's the way how Satan wants to get you. He wants to separate you. I mean, even Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.10 that do not, you know, uh, uh, let there be no divisions among you. You know how powerful we are when we actually come together in the body of Christ? When there is actually a revival? Because Satan cannot even come against that. But what he can do is that he want to divide, and that's the way that he conquers, is by division. What I'm going to share with you guys is truly heartfelt. This is a wonderful, liberating experience that I witnessed. All thanks, all honor goes directly to the Father, not me. 
I don't want no attention from this. I'm not looking for gratification. I'm not looking for any type of exploration. None of that. All of that goes directly to God. Some time ago, I um, I had a bunch of Bibles with me, and I will go to a certain spot in the city. And the place that I went to, uh, thank God for that. I would hand out Bibles and I would talk to people about Christ. I would pray for them. I would just speak to them about repentance, confession. And I came across this one lady. I was just led to talk to her. It was something on my heart to just tell her something. And so I, I, I got her attention. And I just walked up to her and I just said, you know, God loves you. And he knows what you're going through. He has never left you. He will always be with you, no matter what. Can't remember exactly what I said, but it was something like that. Like I said, these wasn't even my words. It was just something for her. And she started crying. She started weeping. And she didn't have a Bible, and I said, here, you can just have mine. So I gave her, gave her one of the mines that I had with me. And we prayed. After that, we departed ways. The reason why I share that story with you is because in the midst of love, there is no room for criticism and condemnation. Love is powerful and it is very beautiful. And that should be released unto all people. I'll speak to you later.